the next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him. But the reason I can't come back baptized, baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. Let's just take a moment. Uh, there is water down here if you want to come and grab some. If you sat on the end of a row and there's people inside, just turn to them, see if they need a, a glass of water. And, and again, if you're upstairs, feel free to come down and grab one. I don't want you being um, dehydrated. So if anybody wants a drink, do please help yourself to that. So yeah, over the next uh, five regular weeks with a, an all age in the middle, we're going to be looking at, uh, on a series on the five biblical symbols the regular biblical symbols that we see uh, representing the Holy Spirit. Let's see if we can name the five between us. Anybody shout any out? Fire. Well done. Oh, still small voice is another one. That's a less regular one, so that's not part of it, but thank you. That is another one. Dove, that's today's. Well done. Water. Oil. Wind. Very good. We got there. So there's these five regular pictures to try and help us understand who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit does. And so at the start of this series, we just want to take, just pause and ask the question, who is the Holy Spirit? Who are we talking about when we talk about the Holy Spirit? And as part of, that, uh, uh, under, part of understanding that, it's helpful to be reminded of who we are. So if you remember, Keith spoke last week and he talked about how we are body, soul and spirit. That we are not just physical beings. Our, our physical body is just a, a part of who we are. That actually the, the physical part of us does not define us. If, if your physical experience uh, appearance changes dramatically due to some major life event or or an expensive haircut that does not define who you are you are still the same person you are still you C.S. Lewis puts it like this you are not a body with a soul you are a soul which lives in a body I really like that you are not a body that has a soul you are a soul which at the moment lives in a physical body. Peter in 2 Peter uh, chapter 1 says, I live in the tent of this body. This is a, a temporary dwelling in which you currently live. Your physical being is a temporary dwelling and the day will come when that temporary dwelling finally fails but you, according to the Bible, are eternal. You will continue to be. But then it depends on your, where you are with Jesus will then define what happens next. So we live in a tent of the body at the moment. Our body does not define us. It's where we currently live. The real you is the you inside. Your mind, your will, your emotions. That which enables you to think and make decisions. To care and to love to be emotional and passionate, to be creative and purposeful, to be you as you have been made. So how does that help us understand the Holy Spirit? In terms of a being, what kind of being is the Holy Spirit? He is a spiritual being who does not dwell in a physical body. So he is 
a, a spiritual being in the same way that we are, but we dwell in a physical body. He does not dwell in a physical body. So we can't see him. We can't measure him. He has no weight, no shape, no size, no color. But he is a being who exists as surely as you and me. And he is not a thing. He is a person with a character in the, and a personality in the same way as you have a character and a personality. The Holy Spirit has will and intelligence and feeling and knowledge and desire and sympathy. Because those things are not dependent on our physicalness. They're depending on our soul and spirit. He is a living person who is a spiritual being. And so who is he? 2 Corinthians 3.17 The Lord is the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. As Keith again shared last week, in a, in a helpful way I felt that God is a compound unity. God is three persons in one being. That's very difficult for our finite brains to get our heads around. God is infinite and there should be some stuff about God that we don't understand. Just in case you're concerned about that. There will always be some things about God that we can't grasp because he's infinite and we are finite. He's a compound unity and so the Holy Spirit is one of the three persons of the Godhead. God the Father, Jesus the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Hebrews 9, he's called the eternal spirit. Again, a reminder that he has always been and always will be because he's God. He, he's there right at the beginning of Genesis in the very first uh, verses of the Bible, saying that the Holy Spirit is hovering over the work of creation. So the Holy Spirit is fully God, and therefore he has all the perfect and holy characteristics of God. But being spiritual and not physical, he is not restricted by physical things in the way that we are. And the Bible talks about, it's clear, teaches many times that the Spirit is able to come and dwell in us. Again, uh, this is something, I guess, for people who've been Christians a long time, this is normal language for us. And, uh, and you just think, well, yeah, we know that. But but it's very hard to understand sometimes that, that, that this Holy Spirit comes and dwells within us, partners with our own spirit, unites with our spirit and journeys with us through life. When Jesus uh, was leaving for heaven, when he was leaving his disciples to ascend to heaven, one of the things he said was, I will be with you always. He said, I will be with you always and then pretty much immediately disappeared up to heaven very strange promise to make if you think about it. I'll be with you always, right, I'm off, and he's gone. What does he mean? Well, you're either with us, Jesus, or you're going up to heaven. Which one is it? But he was speaking as God in that moment, as God in three persons. He's saying, yes, I will be with you always, but not as a physical being, Jesus, but as the Holy Spirit. So towards the end of his life, he said this to his disciples, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and he will be with you forever, the spirit of truth. So Jesus here is explaining this picture that we're talking about, that Jesus in his physical body could only be in one place at one time. And so it is a blessing in one sense that he was able to send the Spirit then who can be with all of us individually, personally, all of the time. And then he says, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. So here's that picture. These are Jesus' own words. The Holy Spirit it is God. But he's God a, a in a personal way. You can interact with me personally, individually. You can lead and speak to me. You can guide me and encourage me and bless me and, and help me and challenge me in my life. As I engage with that spirit that, that lives, the Holy Spirit that lives with me and in me. So that I have immediate access to God. And that is a significant thing. Uh, in the Old Testament, God was way out of reach. When they built uh, 
the tabernacle and the temple, they had a set apart area where nobody could go other than a priest once a year. Uh, and that was where God's presence was. And so they had this huge curtain. Uh, and once a year, this special high priest was allowed to go in to the presence of God. And everybody else knew the risks of going into the presence of God because God is a powerful and holy God. And yet here we see that we can personally engage with God day by day, minute by minute, as we walk through life. The Holy Spirit is God in us. He's no longer far away and out of reach. He can dwell with us and walk with us by his spirit. And Jesus also said in Matthew 18, where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. Again, how does Jesus do that? What does Jesus mean? Is he turning up in his physical body? No, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. So we can be certain this morning that the Spirit is here in this place with us. Because there's more than two or three of us and we are gathered here in the name of Jesus. And so we can be certain Jesus has promised that the Holy Spirit is with us. So he's, he's in us if we know and follow him, but he's with us and amongst us and at work in this place as we gather in the name of Jesus together. That's a significant thing to recognize and realize. We are in the presence of God by his Holy Spirit. There's many uh, in this room who know God well and have already experienced his presence with us in this place this morning and previously. Do you know the presence of God with you? Is that your lived experience of walking with God day by day by his spirit that is within you? If not, you can. In Acts 2, uh, verse 38, the disciples have just uh, received the Holy Spirit uh, in a particular way for the first time, uh, actually as fire, which we'll obviously talk about further down the line. Um, but the Spirit's uh, uh, been poured out onto them, and the Peter then goes out boldly, and he's preaching to the crowd, and he says this, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. So this is for all of us, whoever you are this morning, this is for you. If you are able to repent, and repent is a, again a difficult biblical word sometimes for us to understand. It's two simple pictures in the word repent. One is to say sorry for the things that we've done wrong. And the other picture in there is about turning from those things. So if we're living out a, a, a wrong way of living and we say sorry and continue to live like that, then that's not a real sorry. It, the, the word repent involves saying sorry and then turning and choosing to live a different way. Not always getting it right, still messing up. But, but our heart is saying, I no longer want to live like this. I want to live the way God calls me to live. Repent and be baptized, he says. We have a baptism pool just there. We have another baptism service in the fifth Sunday in October. There's an opportunity for you if you want to be baptized uh, as part of, uh, as a response to that sense of turning to follow God. Talk to us if you would like to do that. But you are included in this invitation of Peter's because it says, you, your children, and all who are far off. If you turn to God and choose to follow Jesus, the Holy Spirit will come to be with you and in you. That's the promise of, of God's word. That's the experience of, of those here who know and follow Jesus. That, that's that's uh, what life is for us. We recognize that work of the Holy Spirit with us and in us day by day. We couldn't be the people who God is calling us to be without that work of the Spirit journeying with us day by day. This word advocate uh, that Jesus, that, that uh, Peter uses, sorry, uh, is literally the one who comes alongside. It's somebody to, to, to share life with us, to journey with us and never leave us. What is the Holy Spirit like then? Simply he's like Jesus. 
Jesus is the one we can probably most understand. He's human like us. We can read uh, stories of his life throughout um, the Gospels and more information and details and teaching about him through the letters. The Holy Spirit has the same power and authority as Jesus. He has the same love and compassion as Jesus. He has the same faithfulness and gentleness as Jesus. If you have turned from your way of doing things and chosen to give your life to God, then you have received this Holy Spirit. And you have opportunity day by day to engage with the Spirit and experience Him walking through life with you. If you haven't yet done that, if you haven't yet turned to God, well, Jesus has opened the way through the cross for that moment of reconciliation where we recognize what we've got wrong and we say sorry to God and we invite him in and he comes and engages with us by his Holy Spirit. Do talk to, to me or, or a, a, another leader or someone that you came with afterwards if you want to know more about that. But the other thing about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit obviously is not a natural being in terms of physicality. Therefore, he's a supernatural being. And that is a word possibly that brings fear or concern or anxiety. If you've watched many TV programs or films that are about the supernatural, they can be terrifying. It can be a word that is unhelpful and that makes us think wrongly of the Holy Spirit. We can be fearful. And therefore, I've known and experienced people, Christians, who are fearful of the Holy Spirit, of what the Holy Spirit might choose to do, and whether, well, would I be okay with that? What, what if I, uh, the Holy Spirit asked me to do something that I don't want to do? There's this sense of, of fear, and, the, uh, and we can't understand well enough, it, it, because the Spirit is supernatural, and it, well, we can't quite, we can't contain, or it's like, it's a bit dangerous, perhaps. In, in the past and, and still at times he's called the Holy Ghost. And again, that can trigger thoughts of fear and concern. And even in our churches, the Holy Spirit can be misunderstood and ignored. And so our first symbol of the Holy Spirit this week is really important for us to get our heads around as we think about those fears and concerns that we have. In a passage Richard read, uh, John the Baptist gives testimony about Jesus' baptism. Um, Jesus came and, uh, and asked to be baptised. John the Baptist baptised him. And during that baptism, the Spirit came down onto Jesus in the form of a dove. And John writes, I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. Why a dove? It's interesting, isn't it? Have you ever thought about about why a dove? What does a dove make you think of? Just take a moment uh, to think. What, what, what comes to mind when you think of a dove? Just take a moment. The first thing I think that's helpful for us to consider is that a dove is gentle. The only reason you ever have a brand of toiletries named after an animal is because that animal is a gentle animal. Doves are not nasty or dangerous. Doves mean us no harm. There is nothing about a dove that we need to be afraid of. And therefore, this picture of a dove is a beautiful and helpful picture of what the Holy Spirit is like for us. There is nothing to be afraid of when it comes to the Holy Spirit. Nothing. He means you no harm. He is gentle. He's kind. He is sent only to help you, not to hinder you or harm you. He comes to comfort you and bless you and lead you and direct you. As I said before, sometimes we can be fearful of what the Holy Spirit might demand from us. Well, first of all, the Holy Spirit will never ask us to do anything, not only not anything that will hurt us, but anything that is not best for us. He is our perfect companion, our perfect helper, and our perfect 
guide. And as for this idea of the Holy Spirit demanding from us, the Holy Spirit is patient with us. The Holy Spirit never forces the issue. Have you noticed, those of you who who know and walk with God, have you noticed that? The Holy Spirit never forces the issue. He always waits for us to say yes, always. But when he prompts and guides and leads and directs, he waits for us to say yes. He doesn't get frustrated with us or fed up with us. He leads us and encourages us to follow. He loves us and only ever wants what is best for us. Anybody know uh, the first dove that's mentioned in the Bible? Noah. Noah's Ark. Very good. The dove uh, was sent out. Uh, at the end of the, when the rain had stopped, a few birds were sent out, but the dove went out and the second time and, and brought back uh, an olive leaf. Um, and br- by bringing back the olive leaf, the dove was bringing back a message from God that they had been saved and that they could have a fresh start and a new beginning. The Spirit of God brings to us all that God has planned for us. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the conduit that God uses to pour all the blessings of the kingdom of God into your life day by day. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit is the conduit, the means by which God pours the blessings of the kingdom of God into your life day by day. Romans 5.5 5 says this, God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The Spirit is the means by which we experience and enjoy God's unfailing love. The reality of that love being present in our hearts and in our lives is through the Holy Spirit. He carries that love to us and pours it out into our hearts. Not just so that we can receive it and be filled with God's love, but so that we can pour it out and share it with the world around us. He lives out God's love for us in practice, moment by moment, and enables us to live out that love towards others. Again, is that your experience? Do you know and experience the love of God in your heart by the work of the Holy Spirit? Maybe for some there's a sense, well, yeah, I did used to feel that, but, but not so much now. The Holy Spirit is the means by which you can engage with and enjoy and experience God's love. Again, he is ready and willing, but he is also patient. He is waiting for you to say yes to him. Another thing that the dove perhaps makes us think of, uh, the dove is the universal symbol of peace. Peace. Correct. And again, it's a reminder the Holy Spirit comes to bring us peace with God. Uh, These are some words from Psalm 55, which you will recognize from a well known song. Fear and trembling have beset me, not this bit. Horror has overwhelmed me. I said, Oh, that I had the wings of a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. I would hurry to my place of shelter, far from the tempest and storm. This picture of of a dove in Psalm 55 uh, being the means by which we find safety and sanctuary, a means to escape from the storms of life, from the challenges of our day-by-day experiences, to find shelter and rest. And this is a beautiful picture, again, of what God is to us by the work of his Holy Spirit. Psalm 91, whoever dwells, In the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. And then verse 14, because he loves me, says the Lord, because we 
love the Lord. I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Again, the means by which we experience God as our refuge, our fortress, our strength, our help, by which we uh, experience his rescue of us, his salvation in our lives, his deliverance, is all done by the work of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, therefore, is confirmation day by day that God has indeed rescued us, that we are saved and that we are safe. That no one can do us any eternal harm. No one can do us any eternal harm if we have given ourselves to God and we follow him. And in that salvation, through the Spirit, we experience peace with God. Through Jesus, we are welcomed back into a relationship with God. And we experience that relationship day by day by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit applies the good news of the gospel to our lives and to our lived experience. Enables us to be sure that we are saved and that we are safe. Enables us to experience supernatural peace that does not depend on our current circumstances. And I'm aware that that many in here have significant things going on in your lives at the moment. The Spirit offers peace. Not not peace because everything's now sorted and it's all done and everything's nice and happy again. No, supernatural peace that is beyond our circumstances, that is found in the Holy Spirit because of our knowledge that we are saved and we are safe. That whatever else might happen to us in this life, God has us in his hands and we'll never let go. And all of that depends on the effective work of salvation that Jesus completed at the cross. So let me read again from John 14. All this, this is Jesus speaking. All this I've spoken while still with you. But the advocate, that's the one who comes alongside, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. As soon as Jesus has spoken of of the Holy Spirit coming and being sent, his immediate next word is peace. Peace. That's where peace is found. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. His peace comes to us by the Spirit. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And I feel that's a significant thing for some this morning. Some of us this morning need to know comfort today. We need peace there is stuff going on in our lives that is out of our control that is uh, uh, horrifically sad and painful and difficult that we are struggling to cope with and deal with and manage i'm aware that that's the case for many and god today is offering comfort and peace through his holy spirit peace i leave with you he says to you today peace i give you Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Uh, Are you able to experience that peace day by day in the midst of the madness of life? Again, that's uh, available to you this morning to engage with the Holy Spirit and ask for that uh, uh, supernatural peace to, to come and to take away some of that anxiety and fear. And it only comes by the Holy Spirit. From the passage uh, uh, of John the Baptist's testimony, it says this, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. So this morning we have the opportunity to receive the Holy Spirit, to, to offer ourselves to say yes again in a fresh way perhaps to the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. Jesus is offering to send the Holy Spirit to fill us. He is, Jesus is God's chosen one and we can fully trust him. So how, final thing, 
How do we receive the Spirit? Simple, we ask. Jesus again in Luke 11. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then know you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? How much more? God is ready and willing to bring, to give you the Holy Spirit today, to receive a fresh infilling of the Spirit to experience his love and his grace and his kindness, to experience his peace that is beyond our circumstances. And I've written here, and I believe this, God is more willing to give than we are to receive. Often, God is more willing to give than we are to receive. So we're going to take opportunity now to ask the Holy Spirit to be at work in us. What is God asking of you this morning? Is it this uh, sense of, of a need to repent, to say sorry for the way that you've been living and to turn to say, I want to live differently. I want to live the way you're calling me to live, Lord. To, to follow Jesus' instructions and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit this morning for the first time. Maybe there are people here who don't yet know and follow Jesus then this is an op- a, a, a morning, an opportunity where you can personally ask, you can repent, you can receive the Holy Spirit, you can be baptised uh, in, uh, at the end of October. Maybe for others it's an opportunity to say a fresh yes to the Holy Spirit's work in your life. To not keep the Holy Spirit at arm's length any longer, but to say a yes to the Holy Spirit. Maybe there's particular things that you've been sensing that God has been saying and you've been kind of trying to ignore it. This morning's an opportunity to say yes. Or maybe for you it's an opportunity to ask the Holy Spirit for comfort and peace in the midst of your current circumstances. So let's all stand together. And all I'm going to ask you to do if you... uh, if you want to, either any of those three things are applicable for you. If you just want to say a fresh yes to the Holy Spirit, whether it's through uh, repentance, whether it's to his work in your life, whether it's to do with comfort and peace, I just ask that you uh, just hold your hands out open in front of you, just simply like that. No one else is looking or, or bothering about you. Just take a moment. It's just a, a, a little uh, body shape, if you like, just to say, okay, Spirit, I'm open to you coming. I'm open to receiving you. I'm open, open. I'm saying yes to you. I'm not closing myself off. I'm saying yes to your work. And then we're just going to take a moment in the quiet for you to pray. Just whatever it is that you want to say in, in these moments. You can speak to the Holy Spirit directly. You can ask him to come. You can, you can share with him what's going on for you and what you are most uh, uh, needing to experience this morning. Because again, God's presence with us is experienced by his spirit. So let's take a moment to do that in the quiet. And then in a couple of minutes, we'll start. We've got a couple of songs that will help in that response as we sing and invite the Holy Spirit to come. But let's just be quiet and uh, pray. God is here and he is listening.